Adon Olam Asher Malach Baterem Ko Yitzir Nivra Lied Nasar Chel Tzokol Atzai Melech Shemo Nikra Thank you, Cantor Kaplan. Today in my sermon, I'd like to discuss suffering. Why do bad things happen to good people? Wherever there is pain or oppression or poverty, the question is always the same. How could God let this happen? Is God as good as we think? Can he, in fact, do evil? Maybe, on occasion, he even enjoys inflicting pain. I... I... No. I can't do this. I'm sorry. Rabbi? You heard. Huh? What? Go home, Mrs. Raymer. Is it over already? Yeah. Rabbi Stone, wait! You can't just stop. Sure I can. Just watch me. But... It's over, Josh. You can't mean that. Look, you're a good kid. You've got a good voice and a good future. Don't let me hold you back. Now do a mitzvah and call Mrs. Raymer a cab. I... Goodbye, Josh. Services are canceled. I repeat, services are canceled. Fine, I'm coming. I thought I told you to go home. Rabbi Stone, there's someone here. Tell him to get lost. There's no service tonight. No, it's a... a cop. Huh? Detective Sam Durkin. Midtown South Precinct. Could I talk to you for a few minutes, Rabbi Stone? Sure thing. Thank you. Fine. Josh, take a hike. So... What can I do for you? I assume you're not here to convert. Are you familiar with a Mr. Jack Lauder? Should I be? I'm asking the questions, Rabbi. Fine. Let me think. Lauder. Lauder. Oh. You know him? Yeah. What can you tell me about him? He used to belong to this congregation. Used to? But not anymore? No. Left about eight years ago, I think. What's this about? Have you had any contact with him since? No, I haven't. Care to fill me in here? Do you read the papers? Not recently. So, you're not aware, Rabbi Stone, that Jack Lauder has been dead for three days? Does that bother you? Should it? Answer me, Stone. No. So, you and Mr. Lauder weren't close? No, we weren't. What's the deal, Durkin? I've seen Lauder's will. He left you a significant amount of money. He left me money? Is this a joke? Are you joking with me, detective? No, I'm not joking. How much? I don't have the exact amount, but somewhere in excess of 10,000. Bull. It's the truth. Jack wouldn't give me bubkiss, let alone $10,000.
And why is that, Rabbi Stone? He just wouldn't. Huh. This temple's in pretty sad shape, isn't it, Rabbi? Well, you're not blind, that's for sure. Can you afford the repairs? I... I have no idea what you're talking about, Detective Durkin. And if that's all, I suggest you leave. Rabbi Stone, you didn't answer my question. Life's full of disappointments. You'll get over it. Rabbi Stone... Get out of my office. Listen. No, you listen. I know where this is going, and I don't like it. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, you're a real mensch. Get out of here. Fine. I'll leave, Rabbi Stone. But I'll be back. Yeah, I bet you will. Putz. Wow, Rabbi, what was that all about? The detective had some questions for me, that's all. So who was killed? Josh, what did I tell you about listening at my door? I wasn't, Rabbi, honest. You were just... very loud. Uh. So who was killed? Was it that lauder guy? We must have talked very loud. Well, yeah. So who is he? An old member of this congregation. Ah, that's too bad. Yeah, well, it happens to the best of us. Are you going to pay a shiva call? I don't think there will be a shiva, Josh. Why? Shivas are for Jewish families. Just forget it. All right, if that's what you want. I guess I'll go now. Yeah. Good night, Cantor. Night, Rabbi. God answered my prayers. I don't like it. Not one bit. Why, Jack? Why me? Why now? a call. I can't just barge in unannounced, but I can pay a shiva call. It's the only way.
Mrs. Lauder? Yes? I heard about your husband. I came to pay my respects. Oh, you knew Jack? Some time ago, yes. All right, come on in. I'm sorry, you look so familiar, but I can't place your face. What is your name? I'm Russell Stone. Your husband used to... I mean, we used to go to the same temple that I go to. Yeah. Oh, I remember now. You have a lot of nerve coming here. Well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're sorry, are you? I'm so glad to hear that. Jack would love to hear that you are sorry. He knows already, Mrs. Lauder. Too late, Rabbi. Too late. What do you want? I just want to talk about Jack. Talk? Just came by for a friendly chat? Is that it? I... Oh, stop it. Just stop it. I don't believe this. You threw us out of your temple eight years ago. And now you drop by for a visit? It wasn't like that. Well, what was it then? Can you tell me that? Maybe this was a bad idea. Maybe you're right, and yet you're here. Why? The police visited me today. Did they? Yes. What did they say? That I'm suspect number one. Really? Well, that would make sense. Who else has a motive except for the rabbi who hates us? I don't hate you, Mrs. Lauder. Whatever. Jack hated you. That's enough. Mrs. Lauder, if he hated me so much, why did he leave me $10,000 in his will? That's impossible. I said the same thing. Jack wouldn't do that. It's a crazy world. How do you know for sure? The police told me. I have no love of the police, but I doubt they'd lie about that. Mrs. Lauder, if Jack hated me so much, why did he give me so much money? I... I don't know. This makes no sense. None of it does. Who would kill Jack? He was a good man. Yes, he was. Don't you start. You have no idea. The police have no other leads? Aside from you? No. How did he die? I don't see how that's any of your business. I... well... I suppose I'm curious, and I'd like to... help. Help? Why would you want to help? I don't know. Maybe I... Maybe I feel guilty. I can't take Jack's ten grand without doing something to earn it first. Why not? Why shouldn't a rabbi play at being detective? You want to investigate, Rabbi Stone? Be my guest. I'll have to ask you some questions about what happened. Can't you just ask the police? They won't talk to me. I'm a suspect. Fine. Fine. Ask whatever you want. How did Jack die? He was shot right in the head at close range, according to the police. I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Lauder. He was in the showroom, working late. That's all I know. What business was your husband in? We were in business together. Fashion design, high-end casual wear, shirts, blouses, slacks. I'd design and he'd sell. Was the business successful? We did all right. It was tough at first, but things have been picking up over the last few years. We sell to mainly boutique stores, but Macy's has bought several pieces from us, and Saks was interested. And what happens to the business now? Are you going to run it by yourself? I guess I could, but not right away. And definitely not in that same showroom. I can understand that. Where is your showroom? Why? Do you want to have a look? It can't hurt. Oh, this is crazy. Do you really want to do this? Yes. 
Sure, if you want to have a look, go ahead. Just because trained police officers couldn't find anything doesn't mean a rabbi can't. The building is 1407 Broadway, room 903. You've covered up the mirror. Yes, it's what you are supposed to do, right? Well, yes, but... I know, I'm not Jewish. I'm probably doing it all wrong, but it feels right. Is it right, Rabbi? It's perfect. Thank you. How are you holding up, Mrs. Lauder? Fine. As well as can be expected. What is the name of your business? Charming Fashion Company. Charming? Yeah, it's a strange name, but it has meaning behind it. It's based on my family's name, Sharma, and it sounds like charming. I get it. Real cute. Can you tell me about your company again? Sure. What do you want to know? I'm going to leave now. I'll see what else I can discover. Thanks, I guess. Rabbi Stone? Yes? About eight years ago, could you just tell me why? Were you and Jack happy? Yes. Yes, we were. Then my reasons don't matter.
Yes? You're the chief rabbi here at Beth Tikva. I do carry that honor. So, what can I do for you, Mr... Uh... Rabbi, actually. Rabbi Stone. Well, fancy that. I can always spare time for a fellow rabbi. What brings you to our humble synagogue? I want to ask a few questions about Jack Lauder. Lauder, Lauder. Where do I know that name? Don't you think you should know Jack Lauder? Why do you think so? Wasn't he a member of your congregation? Was he? Don't you know your own congregation? Am I expected to know everybody? Well... Are you finished? I guess. Wonderful. He was a member of your congregation. He died a few days ago. That's right. The funeral service was yesterday. I honestly don't know where my head is these days. You conducted the ceremony? Yes, his wife insisted on it. Did she now? If I may ask, what is your interest in Mr. Lauder? He was a... friend. Was he? A close one? No, imagine not. Jack was a member of Beth Tikva. Not... Uh, what synagogue did you say you were from? I didn't. My mistake. Is there anything you can tell me about Mr. Lauder? I'm afraid not, Rabbi Stone. My congregation is rather large, and Mr. Lauder seldom attended services. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that's like. You certainly don't. Does the name Joe DeMarco mean anything to you? DeMarco? Yes. Sounds Italian. Other than that, it means nothing. Sorry. Are you familiar with an Ethan G? Ethan G? Is that his name? Just an initial, as far as I know. Ah, well, nothing leaps to mind, I'm afraid. Do the initials JDM mean anything to you? A set of initials? Yes. My, how enigmatic. I was hoping you'd know what they stood for. I'm afraid not. Good night to you, Rabbi Zelig. Good night to you, Rabbi Stone. Mrs. Lauder. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Have you 
you ever heard of the name Joe DeMarco? Joe? Joe. Joe. Yes, I've heard of Joe. He was one of our first investors. He invested in Sherman? Yes. Why did you need an investor? Well, we didn't have much money to start the business with. All the banks saw us as a poor risk, so we needed independent investors. Have you ever met Joe? Jack handled the money stuff, although I know Jack didn't like him. Why not? He didn't say, he just didn't like him. But we were desperate, so we had no choice. How did they meet each other? I think they were introduced. At the temple of all places. At temple? So Joe DeMarco is Jewish? Maybe. Why? DeMarco is not a very Jewish name. And that's important to you, is it? Not to me, no. But it's certainly significant. Do you know an Ethan Goldberg? Oh, Ethan Goldberg. Yeah, I know him. Who is he? An accountant. We used him to handle taxes and complicated documents for the business. Not full-time, just on a consultant basis. Wait, is he involved in this? Not anymore. He's dead. What? Since when? About a week or two ago. Murdered. My God! What is happening? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Do you know anything about Ethan G meeting up with Joe DeMarco? I'm afraid not. If they met, I'm sure it had something to do with the business. Ethan was our accountant and Joe was our primary investor. Although I have no idea what they'd want to talk about. You really think Joe DeMarco is Jewish? I told you, I have no idea. I'm going to leave now. I'll see what else I can discover. Thanks, I guess. Yes? Does the name Joe DeMarco mean anything to you? DeMarco? Yes. Sounds Italian. Other than that, it means nothing. Sorry. I was hoping you could tell me something about Ethan Goldberg. I know he used to work here. Ethan? Oh, what a tragedy. That man did wonders for this community. It's a shame what happened to him. You know about his death? Of course. I conducted the funeral service myself. I recently found out that Ethan Goldberg and Jack Lauder did business together. Really? I'm not surprised. Ethan offered his services to many people. He was a whiz with an adding machine. So I heard. Do you know anything about Ethan G meeting up with Joe DeMarco? In all honesty, I have no idea who Joe DeMarco is. So I'm afraid the answer is no. Did a Joe DeMarco ever belong to this temple? DeMarco... That's hardly a Jewish name. I know. Although, it's difficult to say. As I told you, it's difficult to keep track of individual congregation members. He was an investor in Jack Lauder's company. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Should it? No, I suppose not. Doesn't any of this strike you as odd? Should it? Two Jewish men, both in business together and both belonging to the same synagogue, are killed within two weeks of each other. A third man, who may or may not be Jewish, is nowhere to be found. There are only two connections between these three men. One is Jack's business, the other is this synagogue. Rabbi Stone. I hope you're not suggesting anything... I'm not. Let me finish. People all over the world use religious communities to network and conduct business. This is nothing new. You know this, Rabbi Stone. If there is a connection, it has to do with their business dealings and nothing to do with Beth Tikva. I won't stand for our reputation being tarnished. Do I make myself clear? As Crystal. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is rather late. I understand. I'll see myself out. Wait, let me give you my card. Feel free to email me if you have any more questions.
Evening. Yeah? Nice night. Whatever. So what's your name? Look, could you leave me alone? Do you know Joe DeMarco? Sure I do. That's my name. Really? Yeah. What of it? You're a hard guy to track down. Well, yippee. You found me. What do you want? What's your beef with Ethan Goldberg? Never heard of him. Your name appears in connection with his. Lots of Ethan Goldbergs. Lots of Joe DeMarcos. Both are common names. You got nothing. So leave me alone. Ethan was killed just outside of this bar. Coincidence. You still got nothing. Do you know Rabbi Zelig? What's a rabbi? His full name is Amos Zelig. Nope. Sorry. What's your connection with Jack Lauder? Don't know him. Sure you do. He wrote you a number of checks. Whoever he wrote them to, it wasn't me. Your name is on the checks. Then it's some other Joe DeMarco. Get out of here. Your name comes up yet again, Mr. DeMarco. This time in several emails addressed to Rabbi Zelig. So? So what's the deal? It wasn't me. It was another Joe. Can it? Sing another tune, because I'm sick of the old one. It's enough evidence to book you if I choose to go to the police. So are you gonna tell me what's going on? Fine. You wanna talk? Let's talk. But not here. Follow me. Come on, Rabbi. We'll have more privacy down here. You've pissed off the wrong people, Rabbi. I had no problem with you, but now I gotta kill you. I see. You're an assassin. I had a feeling you were smart. Your people are in this very, very deep. My people? You mean the Jews? A very cozy operation. What sort of operation was this? Don't think I'll be doing that. Professional courtesy. Say goodbye. You think I'll go so easily? Don't make me laugh, old man. Do you really think you'll get away with this? I've been getting away with this since I was 12 years old. How does a 12-year-old commit murder? Same as anyone. Someone asked me to, so I did. Do you do everything people ask you to? If the price is right. What happened to you? Why are you so angry? Stop asking me these stupid questions! I am what I am, alright? Why are you being so defensive? I am NOT being defensive! Are you hiding from something? What? No! What the hell are you talking about? Are you hiding behind that knife? I... well... NO! Care to prove it? What? Go on. You don't need the knife? Prove it. Or are you nothing but a nebbish? You son of a bitch. I don't need a knife to take your sorry ass. Heh. <laughs> Old man, you're funny. You think your god's going to help you out of this? Perhaps. Perhaps not. <laughs> But my four years on the B'nai B'rith Yeshiva High School boxing team will even the odds. What the hell, man? Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> now 
Now do I have your attention? Let me go, man! You have two choices. You can answer my questions, or I throw you onto the tracks. What? You're crazy! Am I? Train's coming. Make your choice. Fine. Fine! Who sent you? I... Answer! Zelig! Zelig? He's hooked in deep with the mafioso. Did you know that? He'd find struggling businessmen, like your friends Jack and Ethan, and then hook them up with investors. Investors? Mafia investors. He got them involved with the mob? Yes. He got them in debt so deep they needed a tractor to pull them out. When they refused to pay, I was called in to take care of them. So you killed Jack Lauder and Ethan Goldberg? Yes. I see. Well, one question remains. What should I do with you? Just let me go. Well... Perhaps you still have some purpose to fill. I've done all I can. I've shown mercy. The rest is up to God. Hello? Mrs. Lauder? Rodshree? Hello? Oh no. A note? Zelig. Jack. I'm sorry, Jack. As a man, I wished you all the happiness in the world. But as a rabbi, as a religious leader out of duty, I could not accept it. Can you understand? Jack! Jack! Forgive me, Jack. I'm sorry I cast you out. I'm sorry my actions sent you down this path. I... I... Get a hold of yourself, Stone. This isn't your doing. Zelig. Enter. Rabbi Stone, how good of you to come. You didn't leave me much choice, Rabbi Zelig. That's not entirely fair. You could have walked away. I made a commitment. And you're so good at those, aren't you? Tell me what you want. I only want this, Stone. You're going to walk over to the balcony. Take a nice long look at the view. Enjoy it. It costs a bundle. Then, when you've thought carefully about what brought you here, you're going to jump over the edge. <laughs> and why would I do this? How about to save her life? And if I refuse? I shoot her, then you and throw you both off the balcony. I'd prefer to avoid complications, but it's the same to me either way. You think you'll get away with this? You have no idea what you're messing with, Stone. This goes way beyond you or me. I don't claim to see what lies beyond. All I see is a man charged with leading his people, but instead leads them to their deaths. It's not that simple, Stone. It never is. Pull your head out of the clouds and take a look around. This is how the world works. So, are you going to jump? 
Or is this going to get messy? All right. You win, Zelig. You hold all the cards. Good boy. He can be taught. Start walking. Now, open the door, Stone. Wait. There's one more thing. Why do you want to do this, Rabbi Zelig? Zelig! You! You son of a... DeMarco, you idiot! It's not enough you bungle your assignment. You show up here? Did anyone follow you? I want my money! You want what you deserve? Fine. <coughs> what? Are you going to say he didn't deserve it? He certainly served his purpose. Now, move! All this bloodshed sickens me. I... Can it, Stone? You're on the edge. Now die with dignity and jump! Your bravado is irritating. Now, jump! Your capacity for pain is indeed impressive. I'm almost tempted to watch you bleed where you stand. But time is short. Now jump or die. Well, what are you waiting for? Just admiring the view. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? You, you momzer! You are a nothing! What's this? You think you can knock me out like some common street punk? I am Amos Zelig! I've spearheaded the strongest Jewish synagogue in Manhattan for over 30 years! Who are you, little rabbi? Who do you think I am? Those tricks won't work with me, Stone. I've been playing that game since you were knee-high to my tukus. You think you can out-rabbi me? You call yourself a Jew? You call yourself a hero? How can you face God knowing what you've done? God knows more than anyone how the world works. I'm sure he understands. Are there others like you? More than you can possibly imagine. Is this how a rabbi acts? This is how the world acts. How can you live with yourself? With power, respect, and money, I manage quite well. You really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. Are you happy with this life, Zelig? Yes. Are you? You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. I ask again, how can you live with yourself? I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. You really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. How can you be happy with this life? Do you see this apartment? Do you see this view? Trust me, I am very happy with this life. Can you say the same? 
You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. I ask again, how can you live with yourself? I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. How can anyone respect you? Power breeds respect, Stone. But you've never had either, have you? How can you be happy with this life? Do you see this apartment? Do you see this view? Trust me, I am very happy with this life. Can you say the same? You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. You really call yourself a Jew? You really call yourself a hero? Is all this worth your soul, Zelig? I'm not giving up my soul for anything, Stone. Is all this worth your life? Just how many others are there? As I said, more than you could possibly imagine. You really think you can win this fight? You think you can shut up? Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just die? You don't fear for your soul, Zelig? I fear nothing. Do you fear for your life? Are you ready to die? Are you? You really think you can win this fight? Do you think you can stop talking long enough to throw a punch? Last chance. You wanna give up? No. Do you want to die? People really respect you after all this? I already told you, Stone. Power breeds respect. But you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? Are you ready to meet God, Zelig? I'll meet God in my own time, Stone. But not yet. You really think you can win this fight? Do you think you can stop talking long enough to throw a punch? I ask again, how can you live with yourself? I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. Do you really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. How can you be happy with this life? Do you see this apartment? Do you see this view? Trust me, I am very happy with this life. Can you say the same? Don't you know who I am? Don't make me laugh. You think you're special? You really call yourself a Jew? You really call yourself a hero? really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. Just how many others are there? As I said, more than you can possibly imagine.
You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. I ask again, how can you live with yourself? I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. Do you really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. How can you be happy with this life? Do you see this apartment? Do you see this view? Trust me, I am very happy with this life. Can you say the same? You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. I ask again, how can you live with yourself? I have all the prestige and respect money can buy, Stone. I live quite comfortably. Zelig, it's over. What do you have to say for yourself? Mazel tov, Rabbi Stone. I applaud you. To have come this far, you certainly are resourceful. Just what are you saying, Zelig? I do remember Jack Lauder. Very well. He came into my office eight years ago, looking to get married. It seemed that this Zionist pig-headed rabbi was against it. Oh, the things he said about you. Imagine my surprise when you showed up in my office. Yeah, I bet you were shocked, all right. I've done some checking up on you. In all these years, you've never learned to make concessions. Concessions? Concessions? The Jewish people are slowly becoming extinct. For thousands of years we've struggled to keep our place on this planet and you talk of concessions. As a rabbi, I do everything I can to help. And if that means refusing to conduct an interfaith marriage, then so be it. I can still look at myself in the mirror and call myself a rabbi. What are you, Zelig? You're nothing but a common criminal who consorts with gangsters and assassins. We all have our place in the big machine, Stone. And you? You're just a tiny squeaky wheel. Now be a good cog and just let me go. I know you don't have the guts to throw me over. So, it's over? It's over, Mrs. Lauder. We'll leave Rabbi Zelig for the police. You're... you're hurt. You're bleeding all over. It'll be okay, Mrs. Lauder. Okay. You were shot. It's all right. Let's just get out of here. Well, all right. If you say so. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Mrs. Lauder. Call me Raj, please. After all this, I think you deserve it. But we're going to the hospital and no argument. Sure. Atzai melech shamoni kra. Thank you, Canner Kaplan. Is it only in the aftermath of pain that we are justified in questioning God's fairness? Just how much pain must occur to legitimately raise the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Just how much pain? God might not seem fair. We may not always feel connected to him. That is, we may feel lonely, and often do. 
Yet the underlying reality of our lives is that we are always connected, whether we feel it or not, whether we accept it or deny it. The connection is there. And since we are connected, we are responsible. Battling for goodness is how we give our lives meaning. Maybe there are no answers. Ultimately, we may never find that elusive truth. Yet ultimately, we may find something else. Meaning, significance, and fulfillment. If so, that may be enough.